Hello my YouTube family, welcome to another live video. In this one I'm going to be speaking about why you can't be around most people. And if that sounds good to you, please hit the thumbs up button down below to show your support. Hit subscribe and click all notifications to be notified when I go live in the future. And if you'd like to speak with me one on one, you can book a session with me on my website. It's narcsurvivor.co.uk. Now let's get into this. This is why you can't be around most people. You just can't be around them. Anytime you do, they're going to bring you down to their level. They're going to bring you into some kind of self-destructive activity. And that's just the only way that it's ever going to be with them. And I'm not just saying that from my research. I'm speaking from my own personal experience as well. I do not get involved with most people. As you may see in my videos, I am always alone. I've spent most of my time alone my entire life. I haven't been to clubs for years. The last time I drank alcohol was about six years ago. Same thing with excessive amounts of caffeine, any kind of drugs. I don't get involved in any of that stuff. I don't even go to a bar, nothing. And I don't do it because since I had my spiritual awakening, I realized just how damaging this stuff is. It's really bad. And unfortunately, most people today, that's what they're involved in. But don't get me wrong, it's not that I don't want to be around people. I'm not saying this is why we don't want to be around anyone. I'm not saying that at all. It's more, this is why we can't. We want to, but we can't. And I'm sure you experienced this a long time ago. You may have been involved with certain people in your life. You may have had them as a part of your life. But then you grew apart. You could no longer be around them anymore because you went your separate ways. You were going one way into your personal growth, your self-development, becoming the best version of yourself, staying away from anything negative or toxic. Well, they were going right into it. That's the direction that they were going in and you did not want to be a part of it. Yet they were holding on to that for their lives. They didn't want to let that shit go. But you did. You had enough of it. You wanted to leave that in the past so that you could move forward with your life. But it's very lonely for them. They see you moving on and things are getting better for you. Because they're still stuck in that pit of misery where they believe that you have left them. And so you've just abandoned them. And now you're elevating on your own. But it was never like that. You may be waiting for them for a very long time, hoping that at some point they would change and they would desire to be better. But no, they didn't want to be a part of that. They wanted to remain the same. They wanted to keep doing what they were doing. So then you had no choice but to move on and leave them behind. Because whenever you're around them, all they're ever going to do is pull you back into whatever this mental snapshot they had of you back when you used to be involved with them. They're going to pull you back into that. Even though back then that may not have been who you even were. It's just how they saw you. It's how they perceived you. 
So they're going to pull you back into that. You cannot be around these types of people without them trying to get you to align with their beliefs, their perspectives, their agenda. You can't be yourself. You can't have your own opinions and beliefs. You can't have your own feelings. You can't have anything. When you're around most people, you can't have anything. They want to have full control over you. They want to dictate your every move. They want to tell you what to think, what to feel. And they want to pull you into all of these self-destructive acts that they're involved in. Where they're constantly damaging themselves every day. They're drinking alcohol. They're using recreational drugs. They're going to bars and clubs. As I said, I don't do any of that. I don't get involved in it. And some of you, I get it, I understand, it may feel lonely. You may feel like sometimes you just want a friend. You wish there was someone who was there for you, someone who you could talk to, someone who would understand. And yet it's like, no, all of the boys, all of the girls that you used to hang around with, where are they? They're going out to the clubs, they're partying with all of their friends. They're meant to be having a good time. And you're left out, it's like they just forgot about you. When no, they just feel like it's not so cool when you're around. It's not so cool with you. And I know what that's like. Many friends that I used to be involved with, many people, they're looking at it like it's not so cool when I'm around. Like they don't want to be involved with me. It's not only that I cut some people off as well, but I'm sure even if I try to return to certain social circles, they wouldn't want me back in. Because I'm no longer cool. I'm no longer with the crowd. I'm not desiring to be a part of that anymore. I don't want to be involved in those types of activities. So they're looking at me like I'm a bit of a party pooper. I'm raining on their parade. That's how they see it. Because I'm more on to bigger and better things. I want better things for my life. I don't want to go back. I don't want to get involved in that shit. And I want to be about something for real. Instead of just all of this fake nonsense, I mean, all it really gets. When you get around most people, all they really want you to do is validate their false image. Make them feel real. But they can't be vulnerable, they can't connect to you. And they don't even want you to connect to them. You couldn't even if you tried. Because they're disconnected from themselves. They're disconnected from their own emotions. So whenever you get around most people instantly, you have to disconnect from yourself. You have to disconnect from your own, own emotions as well. You have to do that for them to feel comfortable around you. Because otherwise, whenever you're around, they're always walking on eggshells. They do not feel comfortable around you. And it's not because they can't be themselves, no, it's because they can't be their false self. Because when you're around them, you're not accepting that. You know that the false self is not who they really are. You know that there's something beneath the surface. You know that there's something underneath that. But also, if you knew what that was, you wouldn't want to be around that as well. Because it took me some time until I began to realize what that actually was and how it is for most people today. Underneath this false image that they portray to the world is actually someone who's very angry, bitter and resentful. Someone who's very fed up with life. And that's why whenever you get around them, you feel anxious, you feel depressed, you feel like you're being pulled down because that's exactly how it is for them inside. Even though they may not always display it outwardly, 
That's what's going on inside of them internally. That's why whenever you get around them, you don't feel good. You don't feel comfortable because you can't be yourself. Because they've got to project that nonsense onto you. They've got to get you to agree with it. They've got to get you to act in accordance with it. So that they can feel like it's you and not them. And this is just how it is whenever you get around most people. This is why I don't even bother anymore. I don't bother reaching out. I don't bother asking anyone, do you want to engage in a fun activity with me? Because I already know how it's going to go. They're going to be playing games. The only fun, the only joy that they find is messing with people's minds. Feeling like they've got the upper hand, they've got an advantage over them. And I just don't want to be a part of that. I don't want to be a part of the gossip. I don't want to be a part of none of that. So many years of my life, I literally just cut people off altogether. I never talked to anyone. I never asked anyone to be my friend. I never asked any girls for their number. I never did any of that. Not because I couldn't, they were always right there. And in fact, I had so many people asking me, I didn't want to know because I do not want to be a part of that. I don't want to be a part of anything fake. I am about the real. And if something can be real, it can be done right now. It shouldn't have to wait. But that's how it is when you get amongst people today. You will be waiting on and on for a very long time because they'll just give you these lies and future faking acting like they're about something real in reality they are not but they know that you are and by being around you you threaten to expose them you threaten to expose their false image and of course they do not want you to do that because they want to feel like their false image is real even though deep down they already know that it isn't Most people, when you get on TikTok or Instagram, yeah, it looks like they're living their best lives. It looks like they're having a great time. It looks like maybe you might be missing out on something. And I'd be lying if I said that I didn't feel that way myself at some point in time. Because yes, many years ago, before I had my spiritual awakening, I was looking around thinking, wow, it looks like other people's lives are so much better than mine. They're having a great time. I'm miserable. I'm lonely. I'm depressed. Of course, I felt that way at some point in time, a few years ago, before I had my spiritual awakening. I did feel that way. I looked at other people and I thought, Wow, it looks like you've got the perfect family, the perfect friends, the perfect children. It looks like you've got the perfect life. And yet, curious me, I'm on my own. And maybe I want more of life, but I haven't got that yet. And I feel like I'm missing out on something. Of course, many times, I remember Friday, Saturday nights, I'd be walking home alone after I went to the gym. I see everyone else walking the opposite way. Looks like they're all going to have a great night out with their friends. They're all going to have a good time without me while I'm home alone. Of course, I felt that way many times. I can look like everyone else is together. They've all got something going on. And then it's just me by myself and I'm not a part of the fun. I can't be involved in it. I can't enjoy it felt that way before I know what I know exactly what that's like I've been there I've experienced it myself and yeah I had my spiritual awakening and then I realized hold on a minute all of this is all fake it's not even real it's just this fantasy that they have in their heads that they're projecting 
or rather they're, they're putting it on to us they're displaying it to us and trying to get us to agree with it and accept that it's real when it's not so that they can believe that it's real and they can continue to live in this delusion where they're so much greater than what they actually are and then they can feel better about themselves even though it's fake happiness it's not even real and that's all they're really trying to do they manipulate their audience on TikTok or Instagram making them believe in a lie their life isn't even like that and I can tell you that because if it was real if they actually did the work and achieved something for real I would be the first person to congratulate them and I would be so proud of them if it was actually real if someone actually did the work and made that happen in reality the reality is that most of these people are actually very miserable, anxious, and depressed. It's nothing like what you think it is. They're just putting on an act for you to make you think that you're missing out. As though there's this ideal world outside of who you are and what you're doing. And you're just missing out on all of that. That's what they want you to think. And you've got to think, hold on a minute, if that's actually real... Think about this, because I know this in myself. If I, if I was having such a great time, I was living my, my best life, I wouldn't find any pleasure or enjoyment at keeping someone else out of it. That wouldn't make me happy at all. If anything, that would make me miserable. So then you've got to conclude that when they're doing this, at a lot of times... These narcissistic people, when they go on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, whatever it is, they're trying to provoke envy or jealousy in their audience. They want to have something that they think other people desire to have. And there's a reason for all that. It's because they can't actually find any fulfillment in it themselves directly. They're fulfillment if you can even call it that it comes from other people experiencing it or rather observing it so that they can then experience it by curiously through them from seeing them being envious or jealous of it and then that's what provides them with some level of fulfillment so that's where they do it that's why they obsessively post their life on social media and act like they're having such a great time they can't be real well as you may know with myself doing these videos now for always five and a half years this is probably what attracts so many people to me it's the fact that I am actually real I don't put on an act I don't act like my life is so much better than it's not or than it is rather I just tell her like it is. I'm real. I don't give a false image about my life. You just see exactly how I am. And it looks like a lot of people are missing that because everything is so fake these days. It's really fake. People are actually pretending like their life is so much better than what it actually is. Like they're having a great time when they're not. When they're not. And in fact, if you look at the, st the statistics, it reveals that 96% of families in the world are dysfunctional. And in fact, dysfunctional people, what they enjoy is the opposite of normal. What they're displaying as them living their best lives, them having fun them having a functional family, social circle, whatever it may be. It is all completely fake because they don't even enjoy that themselves. And if you could be a fly on the wall, you would see that what they do enjoy is drama, gossip, fights, arguments. That's what they're into. That's what they like. Because a lot of these people are traumatized. They know that's not desirable. They know that's not what people want to see. Most of the time, at least. 
So they display something completely different. They make it look like it's this ideal image. It's functional. It's happy. But really, it's not. I mean, just look back at your own family, your own friends. It's like they can act like they're having a great time when they're out in public. And yet, then when you're at home, you're on your own with them. Then there's all of these fights. There's this abuse, all of these problems, because they show this false image when they're out in public around other people but then in the home it's very different well as for us it's the exact opposite when we are out in public we are not comfortable with any of that we just want to be real but we can't be real and the only time that we can really feel like we're ourselves is when we're at home But then they're being themselves when they're at home. Because then that's when they can rage, they can abuse, they can engage in all of these negative acts. Because that's what they're really like. That's what they're really about. Thank you for becoming a member of Deepak Mocktail. Welcome. But yeah, that's what they're about. That's what they're into. They're not about what we desire, what we like, what we want. We want something functional. Something sustainable where it's reciprocal. Instead of just a leech, a parasite, someone who's constantly feeding off us. Because that's how it actually is. They look at us like we're a snack. And all they do is feed. That's the only thing they can do. Is just constantly feed from us. Luckily it is. Tends to be psychologically. Although the more extreme psychopaths. They can become cannibals. Where they will actually. Consume a person physically. If they can. But yeah, with most people, it's like a psychological feeding. That's what they're trying to do. Sarah Smile is asking how she can become a member. There should be a join button down below. And there are certain perks that you do gain from becoming a member depending on what level of membership you choose but yeah this is really how it is they hide behind a false image a facade but if you have spent enough time with one of these types of people which really is most people today you will know what they're really about what they really like because if they didn't really like that they weren't really about it then they wouldn't engage in it they wouldn't find joy in doing it the reality here is that most people are very depressed they're miserable they're not happy with themselves they're not happy with their lives they're very insecure Deep down, they hate themselves. That's the reality of the world today. Most people hate themselves. And yet, you wonder why you can't be around them. Imagine being around a group of people who love themselves. You would have a great time. And I know I would too. We would have a great time around those types of people. People who are high vibe. People who love themselves. People who accept themselves for who they are. The 
problem is today most people in this world cannot stand themselves. So of course they can't stand any kind of personal growth, personal development, where someone chooses to abstain from alcohol, drugs, all of these kinds of addictions, going to bars, going to clubs. And I'm not saying that you can never do those things. I mean, maybe you're not taking drugs at least. But drinking alcohol, you could do that maybe once a month, as long as it's not excessively. You could even go to a club once a month as well, especially if you're single, if you're not in a relationship, if you're not married. But most people are doing this stuff all the time. And anyway, even when you go to a club, it's so fake. What has that got to do with socializing? What has it got to do with getting to know a person? Or having a good time with your friends, it's got nothing to do with that. A club is essentially a dark room with very bright blinding lights excessive amounts of alcohol which the, the consumption of that really just damages the brain because that's what a hangover is when you wake up in the, the morning the next day that's brain damage and when you're drinking alcohol you're just out of your mind you're not thinking clearly it just causes enough damage to the brain to wear you're no longer connected to yourself. You're no longer connected to your emotions. It numbs your pain so you think you're happy, but you're not really. And then there's also this really loud music with these mindless lyrics that don't even make any sense or just some stupid beat that someone probably put together in about 10 seconds and then suddenly it's trending, it's popular because most people don't really care about the art of music or the art of anything rather and you don't even know what kind of people you're around or you're socializing with when you go to a club, a bar and you've got to think what kind of people are attracted to that kind of environment? It's not going to be any good people in there. It's a hot spot for narcissistic people. You don't know what kind of person you're dealing with in there. And that's why I myself, I choose to abstain from those types of environments. A lot of fights happen in clubs. A lot of people go to clubs and then they have a one night stand. And then they get an SDI or they get someone pregnant. A lot of crazy things go down in clubs. You know what I find more fulfilling? When I'm just alone at home at night, I mean, pretty much every night, well, yeah, every night, every night for years, for pretty much my entire life, I spend alone by myself, reflecting on my thoughts, reflecting on the day, thinking about what I can improve, studying, researching. I used to like watching movies and sometimes playing on my Xbox as well. But I don't get involved in that kind of stuff anymore. Although some movies are okay. I'm not completely against movies and especially video games. Video games can be good.
video games can be good for the brain, as studies have shown. As long as it's not an addiction and it's not an excess, in moderation it's fine. But yeah, what I really enjoy, and it's strange because when I was younger I actually hated it, being stuck in the house at night. I did feel like I was missing out on something outside. And even a few years ago before I had my spiritual awakening. But now, I love nothing more at night than to be on my own. And to be sitting down or laying on my bed with my earphones in and I'm just in my own world, enjoying my own company, my own happiness, my own peace. And I'm just learning, researching. I can work all night. And I mean all night. I can work until midnight, 1 a.m. And I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. I don't feel like there's anything going on outside that I could have been involved in. I never think that way. I never do. And it's not because I'm detached from the world. It's not because I'm not aware of what's going on outside. Of course not. Yes, of course I know. In the city where I am right now, there's tons of bars, tons of clubs, probably tons of girls going out several nights a week, getting drunk, having unprotected sex, getting STIs, probably all of these fights, probably girls getting raped as well. Of course, yes, I'm aware that all this stuff is going on outside. While I'm, I box myself in, in my room, every night, got my earphones in, I'm just on my laptop working, researching, of course I'm aware of that, I just don't care, it doesn't phase me in any way, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything, if anything what I am missing out on is more problems to my life. As I've experienced time and time again with practically every person that I've ever been involved in with. Because that's always how it goes. But the last few years, it's never really been that I let someone into my life because I felt like I was missing out on something. It's been more that I felt sorry for them, I felt bad. Because I know the space that I have with myself, I know that I have something special, I have something rare, I have something that most people do not have. So of course I want to share that with people. But every time that I let someone in, and I've given so many chances, every time that I do, I regret it. I feel guilty, I feel shameful, I just feel like I made another mistake. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have let that person in. This person, I shouldn't have let anyone in. Honestly, I know that if I could go back over the last 10 years of my life and just cut everyone off and just keep to myself for all of that time. I would be so much of a better person right now. My life would be so much better. I know that. If I had just cut everyone off, if I had never been involved with anyone, I just developed this amazing relationship with myself. If I had done that, things would have been so much better for me. They really would have. 
But unfortunately, I had to learn and I made so many mistakes. But spending time by myself, for the most time that I did over the last few years, it has helped a lot. It helped me to get to know myself, which, as we know, as we should know, this world does not want you to do that. They don't want you to get to know yourself. They don't want you to connect to yourself. They want you to attach to them so that they can keep you down. And then they don't have to reflect on the fact that they don't even know who they are. Most people don't even know who they are. And I swear to God, when you get around them, it's like they've got demons inside of them. You get around them and it's like there's demons taking over you. And I know what that's like as well. I've been around certain people and I feel like while I was around them, it's like I was possessed. I couldn't even think for myself. It's like I was brainwashed under a spell. And that's what it's like when you go to a club. It's like you have to disconnect from yourself. These days, that's what having a good time is. Escapism. Disconnecting from yourself. Well, if that's cool, if that's popular these days, I don't want to be a part of it. That's not something that I'm into. I'd rather be real. I'd rather be vulnerable. I'd rather be about personal development, personal growth. Because that's what I'm into. That's what I'm about. I would say that I have quite high self-esteem. I'm secure in myself. I love myself enough to be real. On a live video, which once this publishes and goes out, thousands of people are going to see it. And when I look back at it, I'm going to be proud of it. Because unlike over 99% of people in this world, I can actually get on a live video and be real. Instead of giving a false image. And I know this resonates with a lot of people as well. I know a lot of people want to see this. I know a lot of people like it when someone can actually come out and be real. Because there's so many of you who want to be real as well. Or you are real, but a lot of people don't accept you. And maybe you just can't find the courage to come out and be real. Like I can. So I want to be a voice for you as well. You just can't be around most people. You can't be real around most people because they're not going to like it. They're not going to accept it. They're not going to want you to do that. They want everything to be fake. That's what they're more comfortable with. But remember, there's also layers to it. Because some people, they can act like they're being vulnerable. As you may see sometimes on Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok, they can act like they're being vulnerable, but there's layers to it. They're still being fake. Sometimes they're just playing the victim because that provides them with a sense of grandiosity as well. And this is why you've got to be very careful what you're seeing, what you're watching. Because a lot of things aren't real, even though it looks like it is. So really, you can't be around most people because most people are fake. That's really what it is. And yet, when you get around them, it's like they want to channel their energy through you because they want you to express it for them. And when you do that, it medicates them. And you may even find that yourself as you're watching my video. Because you've got so many fake people in your life. As I did before myself. 
And it's like you can't express that to them. And you may even feel disconnected from yourself. But then when you watch my videos, and I'm just saying what's on your mind, or what you didn't even know was on your mind, and that's why you resonate with it, because I'm expressing it for you. And it feels good to have that resonance, someone who can understand how you feel. And you're not alone there because, as I've said before, I do watch other YouTubers. I am subscribed to their channels and I do watch their content as well. Possibly some of your favorite YouTubers. I like Dr. Ramani, Dr. Les Carter of Survivor Narcissism. Also, Zion, Terry Joel Jr., Ross Rosenberg. Michelle Neves. And I've been watching their channels for many years. Because their content resonates with me. I like it when people can just be real. And being real doesn't mean we just got to criticize everything and complain all of the time. That's not what it's about. But that's what this content is about. Of course, when I'm not making these videos, I'm not putting out this content. I may be researching, working, but then there's also other times when I'm more relaxed, I'm more just at peace with myself, as I said earlier. So there is another side to me that you don't see, or rather you do see it sometimes in my lives as well. Sometimes you may have seen me where I'm in the video, I'm like at the beach, or I might be at a park playing on the swings as I'm beginning the video because it gets me into the zone. So yeah, it's not all doom and gloom, but it is when you're around most people. When you're around most people, everything is negative. Because you want to be real, you get around them and there's like this elephant in the room. There's things that you know they're not willing to confront because they lack the courage, the confidence, they're cowards. Because they have so much fear and insecurity. So when you get around them, you're walking on eggshells. And then they're also walking in eggshells around you, pretending to like what you like, to be about what you're about, when actually they just put that out, to try and provoke some kind of response from you, because they can't find fulfillment in it, but then they can experience it vicariously through you. Because that's the only way that they can find any sort of fulfillment from it. And it's like this elephant in the room. Whenever you get around most people, they've got to pull you out of it. They don't want you to be in the zone. They don't want things to flow. Because unfortunately, now most people these days are the opposite of normal. They really are the opposite of normal. The opposite of real. They're fake. The abnormal. Everything they do is backwards. And that's why whenever you get around them, they're going to pull you into that. 
whatever you're trying to do, whatever you're trying to accomplish, they've always got to go against it. They've always got to be the opposite of it. It's like... They... They want things to be fake when you're out in public. They want to present this false image. And they expect you to go along with it in front of other people so that they can get that validation and they can feel better about themselves. But then when you're at home and you're thinking, all right, things are okay, we're happy, everything's good. But then they've got to cause disruption. And it may leave you confused. It's like, why is this happening? But it's actually because that image is fake. What they put out in public isn't even real. It's just to get that validation so that they can feel better about themselves. So that they can feel like they have something desirable. But then also sometimes they get jealous when they see that in public you're getting attention. I mean it's only if they can be in the spotlight. They don't like it if they feel like you're stealing the spotlight away from them. And yes, yeah, some people they may look at you like you've got a false image when actually that's who you really are. And they don't like that. Because they don't want you to steal the spotlight away from them. They've always got to be the center of tension. Fake people are very envious and jealous. Because remember, they have a void. There's really nothing inside of them. They're empty vessels, empty meat suits. So of course they're going to be envious and jealous because they're constantly trying to fill this void within. This is why you can't be around most people. But sadly, as you may find when you do take some time to yourself, and it's almost like that exact moment where you truly and genuinely just want to be by yourself. You just want to be left alone. You've had enough of all of this garbage all of this nonsense, all of these superficial things, you've had enough of all of that. And then as soon as you try to take some time to yourself, whoop, here they come. Now they're on you, now they want you to be alone. They're messaging you all the time, they're blowing up your phone. They've always got to be the opposite. They've always got to go against whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. And it's like the entire time, it's like, where were you back then? when you thought that maybe you were messing out on something, when you thought that maybe it was actually something real. But then as soon as you accept that you're not missing out on anything, it's all fake, it's all a facade. As soon as you realize that, then they come back to try and convince and persuade you that maybe you got it wrong. And that's why it's so good that you follow my content, you watch my videos, because, I mean, let's keep it real. This really is a reminder. It's a reminder that you're not missing out on anything. <laughs> it's a reminder that it isn't real. It's really not. It's only real when you go on this healing journey, you have the spiritual awakening. You accept things as they are. You accept yourself instead of constantly running away from yourself. When you do that, then you can actually have a good time. You don't always have to impress people. And that's how you may see on my Instagram, if you're not following me on there already, 
you can it is not surviving YouTube you may see on my Instagram that over the past few years I've been traveling in the world I've experienced so many things so many places as well and yeah I've been enjoying life I've been having a good time most of the time by myself but that's because I've done the work I've done the work within to be able to do that I've accepted myself instead of trying to run away from myself which of course it's something that most people are unwilling to do they just want to push that away they see you you're being real honest and true and automatically by you doing that it kind of imposes the true self upon them and they're just like nah I don't want to see that I don't want to deal with that I'm trying to run away from that I'd rather engage in escapism clubbing bars drinking boozing yeah woo this is what we want to do because it's just running away from the self that's what they're trying to suppress and deny they don't want anything to do with that just look at their actions the behaviors that's exactly what they're doing and that's what they were doing with you when you felt like you were missing out they didn't want to invite you in all of those times you spent alone because you were bringing that reflection of themselves to them you were trying to see them as they actually are instead of trying to validate the false self the false image and that's why every time they saw you it's like no I don't want to see you I don't want to deal with you I don't want to be your friend I don't want to be your relationship partner I don't want to be your supportive family member and it's like all right just nail me to the cross right now I may as well have sacrificed myself because just by you by you being you they feel like you're confronting them you're holding them up to themselves rather than supporting their false self and they don't like that as I've said before this is what it's like when you get around narcissistic people and most people today are narcissistic they're self-absorbed they lack empathy they're concerned with only themselves and their own needs they've got to dominate you they've got to dominate everything about yourself if they could they would just turn you into their own little puppet their own little slave and control your every thought feeling action and behavior if they could do that and this is just how things were ever going to be when you were around them this is why you can't be around most people because they do not want to be around themselves they're trying to push that away they want to run away from it and it may look like they're trying to run away from you but no they're actually just running away from this reflection of themselves that they don't like they're running away from who they actually are they don't want to see that they don't want to be around it and they're trying to impose a false character onto you they want to make you into something else so that maybe then they can try to feel comfortable around you or even if you're not around them they still want you to have this false character because they project everything onto you they're actually the ones who are envious and jealous of you and if you go off and you have a good time without them then they're going to feel like they're missing out on something with you so that's how it really is they're actually very insecure so they put all of this onto you they get you to deal with it they get you to carry it you've got to carry the load You've got to carry their baggage that's what they want you to do
But not everyone in this world today is like that. As the title says, most people and do the research, see the studies, the statistics. It supports what I'm saying in this video. Of how you can't be around most people if you do want better for yourself and your life. If you are trying to grow, if you are trying to be better. If you do want a good future for yourself and your family, your children. If that's what you want, then you can't be around most people. Because they're trying to run away from that. All they're concerned about is themselves. But yeah, there are some very rare people in this world that you can be around. But you've got to be very careful because a lot of people in this world they want to be that, they want to be that exception. But just for supply, they want that validation. They want you to validate that false self. But yeah, there are some very rare people in this world who are empathic, who do have that space where they can invite you in and you can share a, an experience you can reciprocate back to each other. You can support each other. Instead of when it's like you get around someone and they just bring you down, they just suck the life out of you and stick a demon in you instead. Some people don't do that. Some people aren't possessed by these demons and they won't put these demons into you. Some people can make you feel good. And I'm saying this from experience. I've seen it myself. I've experienced it. Well, I've been around some people. And they were more like myself. We were alike in many ways. And when I got around them, I did feel like I was absorbing parts of them and sharing parts of myself with them. I did feel like that when I got around certain types of people. Like we were sharing a moment, we were sharing an experience, we were having a good time together and it wasn't just that I was in denial or gaslighting myself. Yes, I've had experiences that were real true and authentic I have had experiences like that and these types of people I mean you just got to think like someone like myself I'm not out of the bars and clubs I'm not creeping around in the bushes and the, in the dark alleys late, late at night hoping that someone's going to walk past and then I can talk to them. <laughs> I'm not going around doing stuff like that. I'm at home every night, as I said, for many years. These types of people, they don't want to be around most people. The masses, the collective, these are not the types of people that you want to be around. Just look at what's trending. Look at what's popular. The masses are not about anything good. They want to make you think that it's cool. It's something you should want to be a part of. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. They're not about anything good. It's not something that you should want to be a part of. The people that you want to get around, they're the ones who may be alone. They may be by themselves. You may find them in a library reading a book. They may be in college studying. They may be at home just spending time by themselves. They're not just constantly going about around the town, wanting to be seen, wanting to be heard. 
trying to get as much attention as they can. Those are the types of people you want to stay away from. Those are the types of people you shouldn't want to be around. Even though, yes, they may look cool. They may look trendy, popular. Like they're loud and proud and they're just... Attention seeking, they're like attention whores, they just want it all for themselves. They want all of the praise, all of the applause. Empty vessels make the most noise. Empty vessels make the most noise because there's nothing inside of them, there's nothing there. But those types of people, you're not missing out on anything. Just because it seems it's cool, it's trendy, it's popular. I don't know what it's like when we were back in school. But I was the same. I wanted to be around. Well, I was around all of the popular people. I was very into sports. And everyone knew me. I was probably the most popular person at every school that I was in. Everyone knew my name. But yeah, I mean, that's just because it's popular. Just because it's loud, it's out there. It's grabbing your attention. That doesn't mean that it's good. If anything, you should look for the things that are not grabbing your attention. And that's what I did many years ago before this type of information became popular. I was researching about narcissistic abuse back in 2018, early 2018. I was one of the first to really make one of these channels and share this information before it became mainstream. So I was potentially one of the main people on YouTube to bring this disorder, narcissism, into mainstream awareness. Before that, very few people knew what it was. And that's how this channel has now achieved over 50 million views, almost 180,000 subscribers. Because many people are aware of this now, but then we've got to be careful as well that even though there is this awareness, a lot of these victims may just be covert narcissists. And they're using this victim playing, this victim role as a form of grandiosity to get attention. Because that's what they're like. A lot of people, they just want that attention. They want something to fill that void. And especially now, since most people are aware of it, they can't get it like they used to. There's a lot of collapsed narcissists out there. They can't get that supply. So mentally, it's like they become rapists. They want to force it out of you, coerce and intimidate you. We're seeing that a lot now. We're seeing it more and more around the world. There's more coercion, more intimidation, rather than manipulation. Manipulation, it's like that's the old way of doing things. It used to be that someone would come around in a bar, in a club. They would manipulate you. They would charm and seduce you. They would be charismatic. It would be something where it's like you want to be involved with them. You want to get to know them. Now things are more forceful. People are more intimidating, they're more loud. And it's literally like right in your face, like, look at me, like demanding your attention. And if you don't, then something's wrong with you. Then they target your self-esteem. They just force you to look at them because they can't get that supply like they used to. So this is something to be aware of as well. 
and be very careful because anything you put out there they're always looking they're always watching whenever you express something you become vulnerable you're putting something out there then people have an opportunity to respond to give you their two cents and yeah it's just going to weigh you down it's just going to drain you most people in this world they are empty vessels empty mute suits and empty vessels make the most noise because they're seeking energy from you they want you to fill this void within them and i've known this for a very long time i remember <laughs> I remember back when I was just 20 years old, I mean like 15 years ago, in 2024 now, this is back in 2009, I remember making a Facebook post, and this is really the one that I remember of all of my posts that really stood out to me. I said how most people are like zombies, just walking around the world. They just sit at a desk for eight hours a day. What is it, 40 something hours a week? And life just passes them by. They're on autopilot. They're just going through the motions. They don't even, they don't have any awareness. They're unconscious and they're just seeking something to make them feel better about themselves. They're depressed, they're miserable. And this was back in 2009. And now it's growing, it's becoming even worse today. It is getting worse. There's so many people like this now. So many people who are starved of attention or well, they're getting attention on social media, but no matter what they get, it's never enough. They always want more and they're craving it. They're just hungry for it they want it so bad and it's like now because we're becoming aware we recognize it's a false self and no matter what you give to it no matter what you invest you're not going to get anything out of it so now so many narcissists are collapsed or they resort to intimidation coercion brainwashing because they can't manipulate you, they can't seduce you like they used to. It's not that way for them anymore. It's sad that but this is just most people don't even want to know you, they don't even care about who you are. They don't even know who they are, so they're just looking for a jet to complete them in that moment, to make them feel like they exist, to make them feel alive. That's what they're looking for. And when you get around them, it's contagious. You're gonna feel like that as well. You're gonna crave for someone to validate you and make you feel like you're real, you're alive, you exist, you, even though you do. You are a real person. You do have a sense of self, but it's because they've depleted you. When you get around them, it's, it feels like that for you. It's really sad, but this is how it is these days. Most people are empty meat suits, empty vessels. There's no one there. The lights are on, but no one is in there. There's no one home. They're physically present, but there's no one in there. There's really no one in there at all. And I realized this a long time ago. When I was just 20 years old, I was already aware of this. I already realized it. And that's how when they get around you, they, they want to make you the same way. They need you to, from yourself because otherwise you're just constantly reminding them that they're not even real. There's no one there in them. And that's why they come around you 
so that they can get that feeling. They want to turn a person who is grounded in reality and has a sense of self. Though it is, that's why they come on to you. They're so desperate, they're so forceful. And it's like they need you, they need that attachment. It's like, you're like this third wheel. They need you there as this extension to make it feel like what they have is real. It's so sad and I do feel bad for them, but there's nothing you can do to help them. Your presence, your body, your mind, your soul, it's not going to complete them. You can't do anything for them. It doesn't matter what you do, you be in there, it's not going to change anything. In the moment, it may make them feel like they have something, like they've gotten something out of you. But it's just an illusion. They're just lying to themselves. They haven't got anything. And it's sad, but this is just how it is. It's why you can't be around most people. And as soon as you don't want to be around them, they will want to be around you. Good, they are real, they have something so that they can feel like they're real and they have something but that's the thing because people who have something within people who are real they have value they don't need to get around people to prove that they don't need to do that now that's how you know that what they have but you talk about it and it's like ah. Oh, they think you've got a problem with it, but no, it's just like you don't want it forced on you all the time. I mean, it really reveals their insecurities, it reveals what they're missing in their lives, what they can't have, what they can't experience, what they can't enjoy. It's really sad, but this is just how the world is today. Everyone say hi to this little catcher. Are you able to read the live chat? Everyone saying hello. They want to see you. Shall I touch it? Does it want to be touched? If it does, then it's okay. During dinner time, even this one Please don't attack me live on camera. <laughs> oh, it's friendly. We have a friendly cat here. Friendly cat. Or is it a kitten? It's quite small. Leave it to enjoy its food. I mean, the only benefit really from being around most people is if you can get around them, that type of energy, as I do. I mean, as you may notice, I often do videos in public places and I do find that it helps because otherwise when I'm by myself, I haven't got that energy. But when I'm around most people, I take on their energy in many ways and I can channel their energy and kind of transmute it into something that resonates with so many viewers because I know so many people are going through this. 
problem is when I'm always alone, I'm not around most people. I'm like in my own little world, my own little bubble of like unicorns and rainbows while there's all of this chaos and drama outside. So I guess that's another reason why I do enjoy doing live videos in public because I'm able to take that energy, especially when I'm in places like this in cities. I'm able to channel that energy so that I can use it to help so many people. And that's probably why if you look back at my recent live videos over the past few months, the ones with the most views, the ones with the most views are always when I'm out in public. Maybe because I'm channeling that energy, I'm using it to help you. Because I'm experiencing it in real time. Well, But this park is really beautiful, even at night. But the video doesn't really do it justice. It feels so great just to be here around these plants, these trees. That's what we got to do sometimes. We've got to get out into nature. Just go to a park, go for a hike in the woods somewhere, somewhere where you can be alone, but outside and around natural things, because that's what the problem is. And that's why you can't be natural, vulnerable or real around them, because they're not that way. And they despise that in you. They want to take it away. They want to destroy it. Because it's showing them everything they're not, everything they can't be. And they will instill that belief in you as well, as though you can't be yours. They gave up on themselves a long time ago. They gave up on their lives, their dreams. They wanted something more, but they chose to settle for less. And yet, that very dream that they're trying to sell to you is what they chose to settle for. But a lot of times you don't even see it, you don't even realize that. It's getting quite late here now, 9 p.m. at night, of course. I've really enjoyed doing this live video and sharing this information with you because I know it resonates and I know it will help so many of you. And I know what it's like, I've been through it myself so many times. I know what it's like to be around most people. And that's why it's best to get away from them. Build a small social circle. People who aren't so involved with the masses and whatever's trending or popular. People who do prefer to keep by themselves. Instead of being around most people, I mean, one in six people are narcissists. One to two percent of the population are empaths. Just remember these statistics to remind you why you do not need to be around most people. No matter how much they try to convince or persuade you, you don't need to be around that. You don't need it in your life. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up down below, show your support. Very important as it does help the YouTube algorithm to get this message out there to other viewers who may need to see it as well and can benefit from this information. So very important, please hit that thumbs up button down below. And let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I read your comments every day. 
and I do try to respond to as many as I can. Hit subscribe and click all notifications to be notified when I upload a video in the future or when I go live. And if you would like to donate, you can leave a super chat in the live chat, a super thanks in the comment section, or you can go to my PayPal. It is paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. And if you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, just go to my website. It is narcsurvivor.co.uk. And you can also follow me on Instagram. I have new pictures and videos of my travels, which I upload to my stories every day on there. It's Narc Survivor YouTube and Instagram. So you can see that on there as well. By following me on Instagram, it is Narc Survivor YouTube. On another live video here at this beautiful park. I appreciate your company. I appreciate your support.